Hey guys, well, welcome back to Tam Talks. As you know, this is a place for real and honest conversation. So whether you're listening to us on our podcast or you're on my YouTube channel right now, thank you for being here and welcome. We are back in the studio and it is my honor to have one of my favorite people in the whole world, Pastor Nate. Now, honestly, Nate, you are the kindest person. My husband and I talk about you all the time. You are um, the lead pastor here at Influence yeah. Church and you have such a heart for people and you are so kind. Like sometimes we just think you're not even real. You're just, you know, there's something about you. So I, I, are you this nice like at home with your wife and everything? Are you just? Yeah, I try to be. Oh yeah, I'm like, see, he's just even honest. Yeah. Um, you're a good man. Oh, you're, thank you, you know, we need to raise up more men like you. Oh, thank but you. But it's such an honor because as you know, we here at Influence Church are going through a 21 day fast yes, based yes. on my book, Fasting for Miracles. And I've invited you to come in. We're gonna dialogue today about day 17 okay. in our fast. Yes. So let's just talk a little bit. If you're joining us on our fast, we're on day 17. So Fasting for Miracles. So we've been walking through this podcast series on believing God for miracles and using our fast, which is yeah. really a way that we just submit ourselves and offer ourselves to God. Yeah. But today our story actually is an interesting one. I know you know the Word of God, you've preached it for years, but it's that story with the disciples, yeah. right? And the winds and the waves, and it, it's the concept that even nature obeys the voice of God, yeah. right? Creation obeys His voice, but let's talk a little bit about these guys, these okay. disciples, right? Yeah. And how many times we've been in the boat yeah. and we cry out in fear. Now, here's what I noticed. In chapter eight, here they are, right? They go out and Jesus is with them. They're on the boat. They're all freaking out because there's that storm. We've all had those storms. Yeah. And he comes up and says, peace be, be with you. Do you realize it's only a couple chapters later when they're back on the boat, Jesus has gone up to the mountain to pray. He comes out to be with them and they're freaking out. He's walking yeah. on the water. Let's talk a little bit about the fact that once God teaches us something and he gives us peace, it doesn't seem like much later in our life that we're right back in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. Has there ever been a time in your life where God was with you and that it seemed like just in a short amount of time he had to teach you the same lesson over again? Yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, in life we think that being in God's presence and being close to Jesus means that there'll be no worries. And uh, there's really not a, a kuna matata moment. You know, it's God is constantly trying to refine us and mold us into his image and be Christ-like. And a time in my life where it felt like maybe I have accomplished a measure of faith that I could get through something uh, and God had to retest me. Yeah, we, uh, my wife and I had the pleasure of buying our first home mm -hmm. two years ago, going on two years now. And just a testimony of God's faithfulness and God's, you know, answer to prayers. And uh, in a season where buying houses was hard and people especially were, in orange county california during yeah. the pandemic let's just like get get real here right? yeah and uh god had um really just met us in that in a, in a prayer for us to you know god if this is where you've called us to be and you want us to be planted here like we need a place to raise our family and so we ended up buying the house and it was a miracle a price that we could afford and people were buying tens, you know, paying tens and thousands over asking price to get properties. And here we are, you know, the house need, we needed to fix it up. And we're on this faith journey to watch God even provide for the, the money to fix up the place to make it our home. And uh, here we are, uh, we had had the house for a year, we're still remodeling and a car crashes into the side of our house. Mm -hmm. And I had told my wife as we got the place and I told Erica, you know, it's going to it's going to take some time for us to remodel this. And, you know, hopefully it won't take too long and hopefully it won't take too much extra money. But I had no expectation that we would have had a nine, 10 month delay in the middle of our project. And just to to really be it, it was out of our hands. You know, it was out of our hands. The delay we had an association involved and structural engineers that had to rebuild a part of our house and. So, yeah, you know, you're on this faith journey and you're like, you know, we held the answer to our prayer in our hands. And then mm -hmm. God's like, no, nope, we need to circle. We need to circle back around again. And I think that in those moments where it just it brings you to the end of yourself mm -hmm. and you again, it pushes you into a place where you have to continue to trust in Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. and and walking into the unknown yeah. and and daily. You know, it's a mm -hmm. daily mm -hmm. it's a daily journey. Uh, journey to just, you know, be grounded and, and to say, God, 
clear the horizon of anything of myself mm-hmm. and any selfish ambitions mm-hmm. and and the frustrations mm-hmm. and the anxieties and the worries and the fears and the doubts and just to simply trust in you. Yeah. So yeah, that was yeah. that's been a recent one for us. Well, you know what I love about the story? Let's talk let's talk about the first one when he goes with him on the boat, right? Yeah. Okay. So they're on the boat. Now, I just get this picture in my mind, you know, these are the disciples, these are the guys he chose, these are his guys. Yeah. They're on the boat with him. So they have to kind of feel this, hey, you know, we made ba- it. <laughs> badge of honor, you know, yeah. we're, we're Jesus's guys. And they've been, ex- they've been experiencing some miracles and yeah. their faith is growing. Yeah. Now they're on this boat and it becomes real. In my book, I talk about, actually you can relate to this. Um, we went out to Catalina Island with, yes. with some members of our church here. And I remember they wanted us to spend the night on the boat. And honestly, Pastor Nate, I thought it was gonna be this unbelievable experience. It's this beautiful yacht. You know, we're going yeah. to Catalina Island. We're gonna sleep on the yacht. But a storm came up that night. So I yeah. can relate to the disciples without any judgment yeah. on the fear side of it. Yeah. But what I love about the story is, do you realize Jesus woke up for them, not for him? Yeah. He wasn't afraid. He didn't worry. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, look what's happening. And I yeah. think what we have to remember is Jesus is always with us in the boat. Yeah. And the times that we do freak out, which are often, He's in the midst of our boat. Yeah. So let's talk about a time when you were in the midst of something in your life and it seemed other than the house, which was, was a great il- illustration analogy, but there was something that came over you and your family and you forgot Jesus was in your boat. And then he wakes up and he says, peace be still. Yeah. When was there a peace be still moment in your life? Yeah. Uh, and by the way, your book is amazing oh, and I've been God, reading through it and, uh, to see the stories that you've mm-hmm. put in it to help illustrate it. Um, a time in my life, I'm, we're actually in one right now, uh, trusting and believing in God to do some repair in our family. And of course we, who we're all in, a, we're all involved in family. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you think, well, just because you're a pastor or because you're a preacher, you don't go through the things that mm-hmm. I'm going through. And mm-hmm. that's not the case at all. So right. my dad, of course, is a pastor and, uh, our family has grown up uh, as a very tight knit family. My, of course, my mom and dad and our my siblings, uh, and we're really just trusting God in mm. some brokenness in our family, and uh, it's easy to get into that place where you can play the scenarios that the enemy tempts us with, and you can start thinking, well, it's going to end up this way and it's going to end up that way, of all the negative things. But I, I am continually reminded that, wait, God is still in control and Mm -hmm. nothing catches him off guard and surprises him. And to be in those moments of temptation where you play the scenarios, you're worried, you're doubtful, uh, to really set your mind on Christ. You Mm -hmm. know, 1 Corinthians says that we have been given the mind of Christ. What is God thinking about? What's happening in heaven right Mm -hmm. now? What is his eternal perspective and opinion toward the situation that we're going through? God's the redeemer. He's the repairer. Mm -hmm. He's a reconciler. And he's Mm -hmm. called us to those ministries. Mm -hmm. And so I have to be grounded in that just... The storm's not rocking him and it's hard. And you know, we just want to say to who's ever listening or watching right now that if if your boat is rocking, he is in the boat with you. And you just need to say, I receive your peace. Amen. He says, peace, be still. And the winds and the waves and all creation and all demonic forces and every evil that is meant to harm you must be still when he says peace. Yes, he says, my peace I give unto you, not the right. peace that the world gives. Yeah. So I just think I'm speaking to somebody right now right, that's man. listening that says, yeah, but you don't know my life. No, but he does. Yes. And he yes. is in that boat with you. And the beautiful part of the story, if you'll read the book and you'll see, is it's so similar because just as I said, a couple chapters later, they're back on the boat, which we know they're fishermen. It's, yeah. kind, of, yeah. it's kind of their story. It's yeah. like going back to work again. Yeah. You know, so they're back at work. And here comes up the storms again, which we know on the seas. If you've ever been to Israel and you know that's just something that kind of happens, those storms come up on those seas. And he comes out from the mountain. Now, if you know anything about this, it's right after he fed the 5,000 and he's gonna go be away for a few moments. I just, you know, he knows he has to be alone with the Father, which we all know. And I love that about Jesus is he always, if you'll just look at the life of Jesus, he shows us how to live. 
which is so important to me. I love prayer walking. I love being alone with God because Jesus himself had a pull away. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says he went up on the mountain. He spent some time with God, his father. He came back. He sees the boys out on the boat again. He sees the seas whipping yeah. up. Oh, I think I'll go out and be with my boys again. Walks out on the sea. And of course, they freak out. They think it's a ghost. And they're, and again, what is it? He says, peace be still. And here's yeah. what I want to just talk about for a moment before we segue into our fasting passage, is that once he said, peace be still, and Peter looks at him and he said, Lord, bid me to come. Yeah. And I want you to know that the Lord says, do you want me to calm your seas? And are you ready for a faith experience? Yeah. Because you can walk on the waters. You can walk on the mm -hmm. waters that are trying to disrupt your life yeah. and bring havoc to your life. And the minute he doubted, remember the story, he began to sink and Jesus lifted him up because it's only faith that yeah. you can walk on those waters yeah. in those seas that are trying to destroy you. Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, one of the things that I think about when Jesus is calling us to do what seems to be insurmountable, uh, Psalm 91 is a prayer that I have really put as one of my prayers, one of my prayers that I continually pray. And it starts out with he who dwells in the secret place of the most high. And to your point, being close to Jesus and uh, knowing that this life isn't going to be easy and it'll have its trials and its tribulations, um, knowing that he does call us to that. What does it look like to dwell in the secret place of the yeah. Most High? What's it look like to reside in my presence? And and when we are tempted, that it is him drawing us back into that place of walking with him, walking above uh, the trials and the tribulations. And, and even when he says to us, you know, your faith is little, you know, you have little faith. That doesn't mean that your faith has no potential to grow. I think mm -hmm. that little faith is your faith needs to grow more. Yeah. You know, keep growing, keep mm -hmm. going, keep pursuing, keep passionate. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, so Feel good. Yeah. Well, let's segue because if you know anything about the book, you know that we have two passages of scripture every yeah. day. There's our miracle passage. So we're trying to hold on to those miracles yeah. and understand those miracles and then segue into our fasting passage, which gives us hope and confidence. Yeah. Hopefully you're on the fast with us, whether it's a three day, 10 day, 21 day, maybe even a 40 day fast that you're learning the discipline of fasting. Yeah. And today's passage, Pastor Nate, you know, is a passage in Acts and we're yeah. fasting for clarity today that God would give us clarity. And if we know anything through this pandemic, we know that there has been a fog, yeah. that the enemy has tried to bring confusion and dissension and fear. And I love the story of the first century church because here we see that they are fasting and praying, yeah. they're worshiping, yeah. and they're getting ready to send out Paul and Barnabas, but they were fasting and they were praying and they literally were persecuted. That's yeah. something I wanna talk about with you for a moment yeah. because we are seeing persecution on the church, not like yeah. we've seen in the Old Testament or the yeah. New Testament, but we will see it in our yeah. day. Yeah and persecution and and why do you think of course we see the passage clarity is what we're praying for today and fasting for but why do you think churches have become so quiet and some people have called them woke and some people have just said they're they're not standing up why do you think we're so afraid of persecution and the church isn't standing tall through this time of testing like we see in america today yeah uh, you know, when Pastor Phil talks and he talks about the persecution that the Jewish people saw in the mm -hmm. Holocaust and mm -hmm. he, you know, reminds us of the stories of how did they get through it? Who was the ones that were able to survive? How did they survive? And one of the things that was mentioned is that they had a perspective on eternity and of heaven. That's and good. could it be that our churches have lost sight mm -hmm. of our destination, our, mm -hmm. of eternity before us? And we are sojourners in a land that, you know, we're to travel lightly through keeping our perspective on heaven. And I would have to say, is that something we've lost sight on? Have our preachers stopped preaching on eternity and heaven and and truly that we are to be working toward heaven and the reward of, of what Jesus has promised us as his followers? Yeah, yeah. So I, that, that would be where I would kind of resonate yeah. with. And you know, the, the thing we always forget is that Jesus worked with more of a remnant than he mm -hmm. ever did the masses and multitudes. Yeah. He fed them. They came along for the show. <laughs> and I think we, we need to be aware that there will always just be a few. Yeah. And yeah. the few can speak loud. We can make it. Yeah. We can make a difference. And, Amen. you know, I think as we pray for clarity today, I just want to pray over you. And Pastor Nate, I'm going to pray over you as you yeah. lead this church. You know, we have stood strong yeah. here at Influence Church yeah. through this pandemic. And take a moment, just share a little bit with our audience how we 
took a stand and we, yeah. for clarity, we asked God to give us clarity because as everyone knows here in California, our governor was not for us staying open. No. He was very no. adamant about us shutting down. How did you feel as being the lead pastor here, especially under Pastor Phil when he said, we're yeah. gonna stay open. Yeah. How was that hard for you or what did you think? Yeah, and I wanna say, you know, at the beginning you had, you know, just made amazing compliments. I thank you and Pastor Phil for being mm -hmm. such amazing senior leaders and really entrusting us with being able to come along with you and, and giving us the opportunity. It's going on now eight years and uh, we just love Influence Church and love you. Uh, but I do want to say when Pastor Phil said, hey, we really, there's something more happening here than just a safety precaution mm -hmm. and was able to counsel us in like, hey, this has happened before in history where it's for the safety, for the safety. And we are concerned for safety. Sure. Uh, but first and foremost is people's spiritual maturity and growing in Christ-like manner. And so when Pastor Phil said, hey, I feel that we're we need to we need to push back and we need to open up. Uh, the thing that I resonated with as he challenged us to that, uh, I said, well, if Jesus Christ does come back today and we say, well, you know, we kept our church closed because our governor told him it's like the the mission of proclaiming the gospel has. How does that stop? Right. You know, and the, the we are a nation that is we have liberties for worshiping and liberties for for proclaiming the gospel and. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we were out of, the, this nation was birthed out of a, a, a people that were seeking refuge from a place where it was being dictated, right. the church right. was being dictated by the state. And how do you sever the head of Christ from the body? Oh, good. And so uh, when Pastor Phil challenged us to that, I said, you're, mm -hmm. you're right on, I think we need to. And uh, of course, you know, we put some things in place to make sure that people were coming in a safe manner. But at the same time, like mm -hmm. there, I was going to the grocery store I was having to, you know, be out and do things. And, and yet we want to close the church. And yet we right. want to close the church. Yeah. And so it was kind of obvious what happened. And, and I will say, being in a place where we have senior leaders and we had people around us, we, were, we get planted in a church. And I remember hearing my sister is involved in a church where they were pretty much the older group of people in that church. And they felt lost without having, you know, older people in their life that were m mature and mm -hmm. able to help them. And so I think it's important that, you know, to what the beautiful thing that God's doing at Influence Church yeah. is the diversity in age groups and the generations. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we're one generation with no, you know, nobody older than us helping mm -hmm. us. And being mm -hmm. being able to have you and Pastor Phil mm -hmm. and, and the board members and the and the people that have gone through life before us yeah. to, to yeah. speak in and, and help even stir some of those things that we were trying to process through and help give us guidance in those areas was amazing. So thank you. Well, you know, and I think the thing we're thinking about, we want to close with this, is we're fasting for clarity. Yeah. So we needed clarity. Now listen to me as we close right now. There was that spirit of fear and confusion yeah. Yeah. and dissension. Yeah. And when you fast, you're literally pushing through for clarity. You're asking mm -hmm. God to show you to show you what you can't see. Yeah. And although we were trying to, to be obedient and listen yeah. to governing authorities, right? Yeah. We're trying to listen, but yet we thought, wait a minute, something's not making sense yeah. here. So that's wisdom, that's clarity. Yeah. And God showed us what I want you to do, as you know, and you ministered so well, we opened all kinds of resources here, yeah. whether it be our food banks and yeah. our food distribution and our clothing distribution yeah. and going into our community when so many places shut down. See, that's clarity. Yeah. And God will give you strategies and insight and wisdom and revelation. When you're fasting, your eyes open up, you see things. And that's what I want to say to you today. We're on day 17 yeah. right now. You need to be praying for clarity. You've been asking God for your miracle, yeah. your breakthrough, your promise, and maybe it hasn't come yet. I'm going to ask you right now and challenge you today to get on your knees before God, yeah. go on a prayer walk, get in your car and drive and just pray, God, give me clarity. Yeah. I need breakthrough. I want to see the windows of heaven open up for me. I want to walk on those waters. So I'm telling you right now, when I wrote this book, Fasting for Miracles, it's because I needed a miracle. It was something I was praying for. And little by little, God's giving me the insight I need for it. And that's yeah. what I want to say to you. Yeah. So again, guys, we thank you for being a part of this. Pastor yeah. Nate, thanks for coming oh, in. So did you enjoy it? Yes, I did. It's always did. good to dialogue yeah. with you. Well, thank you. But guys, hey, we want to just encourage you to stay a part of our podcast and 
and our YouTube video. If you'd go down on our station right now and just click that bell for notifications so you know when we upload another video for you. And would you share these with someone? If you've not purchased the book yet, you can get it on Amazon or any bookstore uh, that sells books. How about that? So it's Fasting for Miracles. Believe God, share this, and literally believe that God wants something for you. He yeah. wants a breakthrough for you. So guys, yes. stay tuned. We'll be back in the studio again with another episode for you. We pray God's blessings on you. Thanks for being here. Take care.